Josina Anderson joining us on the Diamond Factory Hotline on the home of the Cowboys. Good morning, Josina. How are you? Good morning, guys. How are you? <laughs> We're doing very, very well. Can you tell us where things stand uh, with Odell Beckham as of right now today? Uh, so, obviously, today is the day that he is starting his free agent tour, and he's going to be coming into the New York area today to commence a two-day uh, visit with the Giants, which, um, you know, is a really big deal considering the way in which he, you know, departed the team the first time around um, after spending, you know, four some seasons there before being uh, traded. So, you know, that starts today and afterwards, as you know, he's going to uh, the Bills and most likely I would think he would be leaving Friday at some point in the afternoon or the evening, depending on how those conversations go with the majority of that visit happening on on Friday. And I'm sure Giants fans will be on their, you know, P's and Q's trying to <laughs> and the organization offer him not to leave the building. And then obviously, you know, he ends up in Dallas where you guys are uh, on the 5th to begin his two-day visit um, uh, with that team. So... Yeah, that's where we are. <laughs> is he definitely going to visit all three, or is there a chance that, you know, like as Von Miller says, we don't let him leave the building? Like, is there a chance he signs before seeing all three spots? I mean, anything can happen. A free agent process is always fluid. Anything can happen. Um, but my expectation as of right now is that he will get to um, all three teams um, because from a business standpoint, it just makes sense to – you know, give all of those teams, you know, the opportunity to get that in-person vibe. And quite frankly, after doing so, and you have that experience in person, it, you know, should, you know, raise the desire, anti-leverage, you know, for him to come to any one of those teams and other teams, you know, not just beyond those three teams. We'll see if he even goes to any other place after that. Um, I don't, I, I, it would be, it would be kind of hard pressed for me to see him not getting to Dallas and letting down uh, Jerry Jones in that sense, especially as vocal and as much pressure as Jerry Jones, I feel, was putting on the situation with his comments publicly and the things that are, you know, getting said behind the scenes. So I would I would be surprised at this point, but I've been covering the NFL for 20 years and, you know, anything is always possible. Last year I would have thought he would have ended up with the Packers and everything switched the day of – you know, um, the decision last year um, after Von Miller and Jalen Ramsey and all those guys kept calling him and then he ended up with the Rams. So things can switch. People keep saying this team is ahead, that team is ahead. I really do not think that's the case. I, I believe that the the uh, decision is still wide open. He's still considering things. There are multiple factors to consider. Um, I, I think he has it in his head, you know, certain preferences, but by no means do I think it's the Oh, Justine, we still got you? Did we lose you? Might have. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, oh, there we go. go. We've, we've got you now. We We're got good. you back. Jo okay. Justine, okay. is Odell someone that you think like needs to – needs to feel the love, needs to feel the recruitment? We, we've covered the Cowboys for a long time. We have never heard them speak so openly about the recruitment of a player like this. Do, do you think that – that plays heavily into Odell's decision making. Not in a negative, connotative way, like in terms of some diva needing his ego fed. So not in that sense, but in the same sense that we all, you know, like to feel valued and appreciated. We like to hear that. I mean, certainly when you are kind of feeling the pulse from different teams, it, it, it's human to take into account, you know, who's saying what. Um, what players are speaking up, what players are not speaking up. Of course you're going to notice that. That's just – that would be anybody, not just OBJ. So I do think those things factor, but not from an egotistical standpoint, more from a, a, a human standpoint of it being obvious that that would have an effect on him. But like I said, you know, I feel that there are multiple things that are, you know, to be considered. You know, Odell really wants to – make this last place that he is signing with really the place that he wants to end up with. And so because of that, there are multiple things that really need to come to place. At the same time, 
you know, even though it's the second ACL injury, you know, all you have to do is roll the tape from when he left the Browns, right, until when he ended up with the Rams all the way to February 13th with the Super Bowl, and just the sheer impact once he started to get acclimated to Sean McVay's offense that he had on the team. And I know Odell's working really hard behind the scenes. I'll get more into that with my own reports, you know, later today to, you know, get himself physically ready. Um, but I still think the expectation is, is that over time, it's still going to take time. So even if he were to join any of these teams, I, I believe um, if, if he decides to do it this season, and I don't think that's all the way, you know, completely decided, but if it were to happen, you know, for this season, um, you know, it's going to take an acclimation period and it's going to take not only for that with the playbook, it's going to take that time, you know, on the actual field, but it happened with the Rams, I would say, after like the third or fourth game. And then you could see he was just kind of really in there. And then Sean McVay figured out really well how to use him. And it really started to click with him and Matthew Stafford. But Jerry Jones, at the end of the day, obviously because we're speaking about the Cowboys, hmm. um, has to figure out what that is worth to him. You know, everybody knows he's looking for a multi-year deal. And everyone, what does he want? How much does he want? Da, 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 da. Well, how much is it worth to the Cowboys after not, you know, getting a Super Bowl for umpteen years to potentially get that player who takes you over the top for you to put another ring on one of those fingers? How much is that worth to you? And not just for this season, but to then have someone who you know takes care of their body, really wants to entrench and give his all to the team, beyond just the season, if he comes back this season, right? How much, how much is that worth you relative to what we know the market is uh, with Tyreek Hill setting the top of that market with his average right now? I'm talking with Josina Anderson, NFL insider for CBS Sports, host of the crew NYC and Undefined with Josina Anderson. She's been on the front lines of the Odell Beckham reporting. Josina, when you, you talk about the potential that, you know, if he ends out playing this year, that that's not determined yet. Is that something more you think that is with Odell's own comfort level or or it still remains to be seen, you think, if he can get medically cleared to play this year? No, oh, he's, he's, you know, he is, um, he's, you know, per, 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 just going off of what Rap Sheet said. He said he's cleared or what have you. I've never, I, the reason why I'm saying it that way is because I've never really specifically asked him if he's clear. I think, you know, where, where you know, the conversations kind of come together is that we know he's at the 10 month mark. So forget about if he's clear and he's not clear. Just look at the timeline of where he is relative to when the injury happened. So if you get to the 13th of this month, I think it makes it 10 months. I believe last time when he came back, before he came back on the field, I think it was 11 months. So he's, you know, a month behind that one. And so you know that a uh, ACL is going to have a certain amount of time to heal and then for a player to psychologically, you know, feel better. So I would say more pay attention to that than, you know, when any doctor says, because at the end of the day, it's going to go off of how he feels and how that thing is healing relative to just all those individual factors. Um, I, I, I don't want to create a big, you know, question mark as it's, it's definitely not going to be this year. But I just think all I'm saying is that it's open, for, from my opinion, it's open from the standpoint of him just needing to take all of the things into consideration. How is he feeling? You know, how, what, is, what are the teams offering? What he feels like is his risk factor and what he would be risking coming back for a team if he did it for the season relative to what the offer is how that would compare if you waited to the new league year and just waited for free agency, but how difficult admittedly that would be to watch the playoffs go by when he's a footballer and his heart of heart of heart of hearts and wants to be out there. You know, uh, what is the city talking about? How does he feel? He's got a family. He's got a son. You know, all those things got to come together, even the same way Von Miller basically put all those things together and chose Buffalo. Um, who's on the team, how are the people making him feel welcome, how are the teammates making him feel welcome, how, you know, the offense, the possibilities, the postseason, does it even change for the Giants if they lose this week to the Commanders, <laughs> you know? So it's just like right. there's so many things relative to the postseason path that are – and he could wake up, you know, one morning, you know, um, and be like, you know, it's this. And then I remember I thought – I remember last year, whatever it was, thought it was, you know, going one way. And then four hours later, I talked to him, and it, and it was – so, you know, this is why I always say, 
you know, just let it be because he, I, I really do feel like he will take his time as a man to, you know, um, you know, consider things spiritually, take that quiet space and what, whatever it comes to him, when it comes to him is when it comes to him and, and he'll say, yep or nope. <laughs> Josina, all three of these uh, uh, of these stops are, are currently on on turf. Uh, the Giants moving to grass though next year. It, does that play a factor? Well, I'm not completely sure of what the Giants are doing with that um, with that field. I know that they are changing, but it's like, is it a real grass? Is it artificial grass? Will the Mars take more consideration if more feedback comes? If OBJ walks in there on Friday and, and says, I'm not doing this unless you're doing it, does it change? So, yes, it's got to change. What it completely ends up being, I still don't know. But as I indicated in my tweets, um, you know, there are other teams, you know, still being considered. Um, that includes the Chiefs. You know, the Ravens are still trying to, you know, still be in there as well. So these are the teams that are currently, you know, on the docket relative to, um, his tour. We'll see if any others get on relative to um, what they know um, are things that he's looking for. Josina, mm-hmm. what would he find attractive about coming to play for the Cowboys? Well, I mean, Dallas just, you know, has its own unique shine in and of itself. Um, you know, the way that the team is playing right now, um, you know, the, the confidence at the quarterback position the balance of the offense and the defense, you know, right now the way that they're in a in a groove relative to how the team is is playing, all of those things are factors. He's got, you know, family in the state, you know, so those things are very attractive too. Um, so I think that's what Dallas definitely has going for it. And, and um, you know, ownership is very outward about, wanting him there the players are very outward about you know wanting him there so all of those things are very strong considerations and i do feel uh when he gets to dallas and you know walks in that you know uh you know facility and really takes it in in that sense it's going to be hard not to feel you know i've I've covered that team I've, i've been to the practices or whatever like it's a spectacular place to be at so i'm sure optically he's going to absorb all of that and, and Jerry's going to put, you know, all of his magic into whatever it needs to be. And we already know from my tweets that I've said that the team is open to listening to what a multi-year deal would look like, but at the same time, one in reasonable numbers. But, of course, what is reasonable is subjective. <laughs> so, um, so I think that that's hard. And then even with Buffalo, you know, Josh Allen is a quarterback you can grow with, you know, for – a while and you have Vaughn there, which is a very extremely strong connection because they're basically almost like best friends, if not best friends. And um, so, and the, it has a whole different feel because Buffalo is like a, you know, just very like a close knit type of, you know, community feel. And it's just a whole different thing. Um, And they're prospecting well. So a lot of things to consider. And then with New York, New York, what New York has best going for is New York is New York, and that's where he started. It has a lot of memories for him. You know, it's where he, you know, he turned from Odell, Odell Beckham Jr. into OBJ. It's just there's New York. I, I don't, in my opinion, I don't, I don't know that there is a better city for him relative to value because just, you know, New York is New York, and it's hard not to like New York. Um, so, and then obviously you have Sterling Shepard, you have Saquon, you have Brian Dayball, really loves Brian Dayball in terms of, you know, the offense and, you know, his head coach and, and things like that. So each team has very unique, strong qualities about it. So do the, so do the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid and the way that they're playing. And, you know, many people would have the Chiefs as their AFC pick to be the representative in the Super Bowl. And, and then with the, you know, Ravens, you have, you know, Lamar and you have the possibility of being a real impact on that team um, relative to just, you know, what is there as a wide receiver group. And they're, you know, trying hard behind the scenes. So I think that each team has very strong qualities to tout. There are things that are probably, you know, m- you know things that are less for each team. It's like it's this, it's that, it's whatever. And, and then even beyond that pros and cons list is the timing. It's 
when is the right time? When is the right time? When is the right time? And and only he will know when it comes to him because I, I know that he had that time last year where he just had to spend time with himself. And he's like Joe, and it just it came to him, and then it and then it was and it was that day. I never forget that day because I didn't think it was going to be that day because originally the plan was going to be for it to go through the weekend. And four hours later, he picked the team. So you have to stay on your toes because that that's how it can be. <laughs> Last one for you, Josina Anderson, all over the Odell reporting here on Sean and RJ one hundred five through the fan. You know he's a he's a very polarizing star, diva malcontent, emotional rock star. We just had the plane incident. How, what's he really like, and and maybe how is he different today than three to or even five years ago? So all of those adjectives that you use are not anything that I would use to describe him. Um, if if anything, to me, he's um, and this is from somebody who's covered him since day one. So my words come from my coverage. He's extremely passionate about football. He works really hard. His teammates love him in every place that he's gone outside of what happened with, you know, uh, in Cleveland in the Baker Mayfield, you know, situation. But outside of that, you know, his teammates love him in every place that he's been. He has a strong desire to want to win. Um, And when you are somewhat of a, you know, kind of a supernova type of character who, as you know, just kind of has this unique energy that, kind of pulls people into you that you know when you've covered him and you've been around him and you've seen him at games, you know, that in and of itself sometimes can invite and attract things that happen when you come outside of, you know, your just professional world and you're you're going about life. And it doesn't mean that he's done everything perfectly. But if we all look back at where we were in our 20s and, and decisions or things that have, you know, we've made, we would all look back and say we all have evolved. We all have gotten better. And even if you look at the Justin Tuck interview on my Twitter now, I mean, as a legacy giant, he's acknowledging that he sees the arc of growth that Odell has had. And even beyond that, um, you know, thing that happened uh, a Sunday, um, you know, with the American Airlines or what have you, you know, there's two sides to the everything that happens. And, um, and you know, sometimes there are situations where people egg you on just because of who you are. And it doesn't mean it's right. And it doesn't mean that you still have to watch kind of how you respond. But it also doesn't mean that, you know, someone like Odell is going out starting those things either. And I say that as a person who's spoken to him about, you know, what happened and things like that. So I'm not just kind of talking from the left side of my mouth. But overall, my point is, is that I feel like he has evolved. But those things that I started out saying with how I feel like he is as a football player are tried and true. And the last thing that I would say is he, he is a bona fide difference maker. And if the Rams had to do it all over again, I'm sure they would pay him and then some to come back for that experience of paying, you know, of getting a ring, much in the same way that they did Eric Weddle pulling him off his couch and he made a difference in helping them get a championship too. Josina, thank you so much for your time. Keep it coming with the <laughs> tweets. We're sitting on the edge of our seats. We'll talk to you moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one.